All right, so before we go into the OSI model, I do want to talk about some common ports and protocols. Since this is a refresher, most of these should be pretty familiar to you. I'm going to run through them pretty quickly and just talk about them briefly uh, on each of these common ports. And the reason I've listed these is because they are things that we'll see quite often as a penetration tester. And it's just something that as we're going through the course, if one of these show up, it's something that just rings a bell and you see you see a scan, it comes back and you see port 21, you just think, ah, yes, FTP. Or you see port 80, you think, ah, yes, HTTP. So you gotta start training your mind to memorizing these ports. So when we get into our scanning, which again, we haven't covered scanning, but when we get there and we see what ports are open on a machine, we're gonna be able to have these common ports memorized. So on the TCP side, we've got FTP. FTP is the file transfer protocol. You're gonna see this in some assessments. You're gonna see this a lot when we do something called capture the flag, we run through some test machines. You'll see FTP open quite a bit. So FTP file transfer protocol, all that means is we can log into this server, we can put a file or we can get a file off the server. Now SSH and Telnet kind of play hand in hand. Uh, Telnet is the ability to log into a machine remotely. Now SSH does the same thing. The only difference is SSH is the encrypted version of that. So with Telnet, you are in clear text and with SSH, you are encrypted. Now SMTP, POP3 and IMAP all relate to mail. We're not gonna worry too much about mail in this course, but you might see it come back up at some point. So just remember your 25, 110 and 143. Uh, DNS. So DNS is a way to resolve IP addresses to names. And we could take a quick look at that if we go back to our Kali machine and say we're at Google here. We've got Google up, but the computer doesn't really know what Google is. The computer is just using nice text like google.com for us, the humans. What's going on on the back end is Google actually resolves to an IP address. Now that IP address is how the computer knows to get back and forth. Because we don't want to sit there and type in IP addresses, this DNS or domain name system has been implemented for us. So we type in google.com on the back end. It knows, hey, I want to go out to 17, 1791022234, whatever it is in, in reality. But this is just a quick way for the computer to relate to a human and the human to, uh, you know, have easily readable access to some of this stuff. So going back to our PowerPoint, we have HTTP and HTTPS. That is a website, just what you saw there. Mostly everything is on 443 now or HTTPS. The HTTP on port 80, you'll see sometimes, remember that is the non-secure version of the protocol. So HTTPS is encrypted, HTTP is not encrypted and not secure. So. Lastly, SMB ports 139 and 445. Originally, it was just 139. In the later versions of Windows, they put on 445. You're going to see these ports a lot. This is probably the most common port you're gonna see as a pen tester. These relate to file shares. You might also hear this called Samba. Uh, so there are a few names for it, but when you think of SMB and you see 139 or 445, think of file shares. And as a pen tester perspective, you got to think about all the crazy exploits we've had regarding SMB. The most recent one uh, as of this course was the WannaCry virus, right? So you had the WannaCry virus. It's also known as Eternal Blue was what it was built off of or MS17010 was the official term of that exploit. That exploit utilized an SMB exploit to navigate through networks. So it became very vicious very quick because SMB is open so frequently on networks. Now on the UDP side, we also have DNS over here. DNS is both a TCP and UDP protocol. We also have DHCP. Now when it comes to IP addresses, DHCP associates you with an IP address kind of at random. Now you could have the opposite of that is what is a static IP address. So with DHCP, you plug into your network, say your home network, and the internet just fires up. Guess what? Probably DHCP on the back end. It just picks a number between a range, says, hey, here's your IP address. I'm gonna let you lease that out for eight hours or a day or a week or however long the timing is set for, and that IP address is yours. 
Now the opposite of that again is static. So you could say, hey, I want a static IP address. And anytime I plug in with this specific computer, go ahead and give it this IP address. So how are we gonna know that? Most likely the MAC address, right? So from layer two, it's gonna know layer three and how to assign it. So again, DHCP should be pretty familiar to you. We've also got TFTP on port 69, which is the trivial FTP, and it utilizes UDP instead of TCP. And we also have SNMP, which is the simple network management protocol. So you will encounter SNMP uh, occasionally on networks, not always, but when we do encounter it, there may be some information to be gathered, especially if there are strings being used that are community or public strings. And we'll worry about that when we, we encounter it, but you will probably see it again in this course. So that is it in this video. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the OSI model and tie all this together. Then we'll get into a little bit of subnetting and we'll end this with a, a refresher on networking, a final, final video on networking. So I'll see you over in the next video.